Hi, I'm Beth Ann Cooner. I'm the blogger for the Excel blog, and I'm here with Professor Flute at the University of Michigan, Amy Porter. Hi. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. So, Professor Porter, how do you self-identify what you do for a living? Well, here at the University of Michigan, I feel like I'm a lot of things to a lot of people. So, um, it's not one thing that I identified with being here. It's been, of course, a flutist, first of all, and then I walk around trying to still play well in concerts, so that would be a concert artist, and then I want to give back and teach and tell everybody what, you know, should be happening on the flute, so that's teaching, and then uh, service to my school, that's a huge component, so I feel like, um, I feel like I can't identify just with one part of me, um, but the musician in me, I identify Great. with the most. And can you describe the musical activities you do outside of teaching? Sure. I have invitations to play with a trio, flute, viola, guitar, uh, it's trio vibrato, and I have invitations to play as a, a master class teacher and then a s small recital. I have invitations to play as a concerto soloist, and uh, the Trail of Tears concerto written for me is a great example. So I just enjoy uh, my life outside of school. It freshens me, refreshes me, so I can come back and um, tell everybody what I've learned. And I think I, I play better when I have some goals. So when you were a student at Juilliard, what were your goals? What did you hope your career would look like? You know, we're talking before the computer <laughs> existed. So you're sitting on your bed and you're reading magazines and seeing the latest, greatest flutist or latest, greatest classical CD being released and this this person and that person's doing that. We had we just read about it. And so when you closed the magazine and turned everything off, you, you were able to cultivate um, your own dreams. And so my own dreams didn't really have an ending. I just only saw beginnings. So I was thinking, well, I'll enter this competition because there's money. I'll um, try out for this job because there's money. And at the end of the day, if you want someone to write a, a name on a check for you for flute playing, that's a really good thing. And so that was my goal, to have somebody write Amy Porter on a check. And if anybody still wants to do that, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I do love it. it. Um, and how has that evolved now? What are your goals and hopes for the future look like now? It's not that I've stopped aspiring, but ambition seems to um, quell at a certain point and you realize I'm happy and I'm I'm loving being a mentor and I'm loving seeing the success of others. And it's not such about me anymore. Um, I'm happy to, to receive um, the accolades and everything, but it's not necessary, I feel like. I feel like goals are, are um, met and now how can I create? It's not so much, like I said in the last question, it's not so much the destination, it's about the journey, it's about starting something. Let's start something. And at this point, it's not for me, it's for, for everyone else. That's fantastic. I hope. <laughs> uh, what does networking look like for you? Well, I think it's a really good um, section in the feng shui map. So if you, if, if you look at the feng shui, feng shui your house, there's a networking corner. <laughs> You know, networking I laugh at because I think that it's all about relationships. It's so much not about what can you do for me and I'll do something back. No, 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 no. We don't want to do that. We want to be authentic people. We want to just really make sure that we're tuned into that person and their interests, not not yours. So if, ne if I'm networking with the wrong person, uh, I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> So how do you position yourself to network with the right people? So I've just done that actually. So I, d I went all old school. So I had a few weeks where I had to be down um, with an injury, right? So I, what do I do? I keep working. And I decided after one conversation with a radio station that the radio stations are still playing CDs. And I have a bunch of them in my basement. And so they said, well, we'll take everything you have. We have this and this. And I said, well, I have five more. So old school, wrapped seven CDs in bubble wrap, mailed them off to this radio station in at some university in North Carolina, right? 
I did that 11 more times. Because <laughs> I found the labels in six, and I was like, well, there's six, and there's five, and plus the North Carolina one. So 12 have gone out UPS saying, hi, this is me. This is me. I need airplay. Boom. And the letter wasn't even in an envelope. It was just wrapped in like at the top of all the bubble wrap and sealed. And I, I looked up on the internet who is the programming manager and was it current and were they on LinkedIn saying that they were current because you don't want to say the wrong person. So the letters were a little bit different at the end. I just kind of said, hey, I know this person, you know, that's that kind of networking. You know, I knew I knew I knew one of your friends in the 80s. Basically, that's kind of what I would say. <laughs> well, that's great advice that you put yourself out there. You had materials ready to go out. And I think a lot of students can apply that to what they're doing, just doing their research, reaching out to the right people and having material to put out there. That's right. Well, material, it, 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 it's, it's when, when you meet people that say, well, why, why do you do that? And you think, why am I, why can I not do, how can I not do this? Why am I not creating content? That's what I do. That's why I breathe. It's, I put this out there. Now, there's content that's thoughtful, scholarly, and knowledgeable, and then there's content that's crap. So if you're ready to put your neck on the line and have it be chopped off uh, and roll, then, then release your content. That is a very strong statement. Because no is the best, and the thumbs down is the best, and every negative you ever get for your content is the best. You know why? Because it makes you better. It makes you not only question why you're doing it, but should you be doing it? And if you should be doing it, keep doing it, but just be better. Like I learned, I learned. But uh, I learned from, from, from the social media and I learned from turning off the social media. What's happening is you're focused and then you have all these like shiny objects so if there are too many shiny objects around your focus, you got to turn them off. You have to make them all go away. Shut everything off and just focus. Because I did not have, you cannot look at me as an example. I did not have such uh, um, things in my life that were bringing me out of focus. So, so your generation absolutely can handle the, the, um, the bombarding of um, information coming at you but you can also turn it off. That's something I learned early on in my life from my parents. Guess what? See that box over there? It has information coming at you. And guess what? You can turn it off. <laughs> wow. And so that's why I would turn off the news. There was a so give it away is a big piece of advice um, and have some things beyond the instrument. Ath athleticism is great. Um, I try and stay active because uh, I turn 55 in two weeks. Um, I try to take a vacation, but I never do. So I have four days next week. <laughs> next week is a big week. Uh, four days vacation and which I'll unplug as they say. Um, yeah. So that's my life. It's always moving. It's always producing, um, and always giving it away. So I hope that that helps, um, the Excel listeners and, and, um, watchers out there. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. You're Professor. welcome. See ya.